Um, so I thought I could change things. Apparently I could because I went to a small group one night and I stood up to the leader of the small group Bible talk and said that, okay, there was a nice sermon. There was a nice, sermon, nice lesson about going out and evangelizing, but well, we have people here, you know, we have, this guy's not here. This girl's not here. We're taking care of each other. And it's like I grew two pointy horns out of my head. I became Satan. <laughs> Literally. And that's one of the things about the ICOC and control. It's It's been love bombing all the way since we met our neighbors back in North Carolina. Um, they like to show attention to you. like to act like you care. But in some ways they may be due, but in other ways they really just want to obey the system and they're standing in the system. So they have to be nice. They have to play a front per se and not really have any type of authentic deep relationships with people where they're truly vulnerable. Um, they say they do, but in reality they don't. Um, so basically you had a bunch of people turn on me at that meeting. I was called the next day by the leader of the Bible talk and said I was quote unquote to limit my fellowship and I was going to have a talk with one of their ministers the next week or so. So I had a talk with him and it was a breaking session. Um, basically, he sat me down, he berated me and said the only good things I was doing were, you know, I was showing up to events and I was tithing. Question, why does someone on the ministerial staff whom I'm paying your salary know that I am tithing? <laughs> problem oh we were going to fix that yeah one of the things I did back in the teen ministry um, I used to shake down teens for contribution because tithes are pretty much mandatory you start skipping tithes and your salvation is in jeopardy mm-hmm. now for teenagers obviously it's a little bit different since you know they don't have any income of their own so it's kind of like a dollar a week or two dollars a week if they were or more if they were uh, working a job somewhere but um yeah, I see shake down tuition. That was tuition. Shake down uh, contribution. That was not good. Um, so basically, he, after he broke me down, he said, okay, well, we can offer you someone to disciple. And I'm thinking, okay, that's not going to work because I see how wonderful it's worked in my life all these times. And the um, second thing, if there was a woman I was interested in at that point in time, he would have offered me. A woman so hey Aunt Sally girl she's pretty cute yeah mm. but there was fortunately there was no woman at the time um, so on Halloween I basically called the lead evangelist I told him I was leaving and I, I never looked back so it's been mm. almost 12 years since I left so it's been mm. really um, after that I didn't have all the pieces to put together for the next six months one of the issues with the ICOC that former members and I have worked on is really the theological aspects mm. of their study series and what they believe. Um, because again, a lot of it, it sounds orthodox. Mm. On the other hand, it's really not when you start digging into it. Um, and again, I found a normal, small, healthy church where I actually saw Christians who were living by the power of the Holy Spirit that weren't being discipled or controlled. And um, the last couple of pieces came in and ultimately came down to I did not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because I was still putting my faith in my own works instead of Jesus Christ alone. Mm. And that's when I had that piece done and locked down so it's like okay one Sunday after service and it's like okay I'm going to go up and publicly confess my sins and repent of my sins and I talk to the minister and elders and stuff like that baptized the same day so there you go no works required (laughs) that's the work of Jesus so uh, that's what happened. And then over the next preceding year and couple of years, you can really see the fruits of sanctification in my life. 